Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jesse. if you're new here. I'm Ben. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna do a Q&A today. I have a good amount of questions. I feel like some of them are more directed for me and some of them are kind of like family questions. So I have a couple of them here on my phone that we're gonna go through that you guys gave me on Instagram. I'll put my little Instagram thing here. You can follow me for next time or I put them on like the channel community page too. We're gonna go through these questions. We'll start with the ones we got. Which one should I start with? I'll start with a couple of like more simple questions and yeah. then from there. First question is from someone on Instagram. Our favorite place or store to buy supplements? For us, that is full script. You have to have like a doctor. You have to work with somebody because they use full script as like the their their method of getting supplements to you. But the benefit there is that through the practitioner, you usually have a some sort of markdown from what they are normally. And, and also with that, it's just better than getting from Amazon or something like that because you just never really know from Amazon how they are stored and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, but I've still gotten some supplements. Well, right, We've gotten right. supplements from Amazon. If you don't it have any access to full script, like we said, I feel like unless you have a practitioner to work with that does that, we have gotten like just find a local health store. We used to go to just like a pharmacy in Raleigh that I would get my thyroid medication from and they had good quality supplements. You can find good quality supplements on Amazon if you buy them directly from, like if you're buying designs for health from Amazon or just buy it from their website. So like designs for health is a good brand. Right. Is it Thrive? Or what's the Thorn like, is Thorn another one. is another good brand. Those are like good brands of supplements that are like usually third party tested, I believe, which is really important. Getting something like, I don't know, like Nature's Path or is it Nature's Path or some of those that you can get from like Walgreens. I mean, if that's all you can get, that's all you can get. But if you can get a higher quality supplement, it's better. Next question is, do you have plans to grow your family? We only have one child, but thinking of trying for two. I do have a garden out back. I don't get it. <laughs> Dad jokes coming okay. in hot. I feel like if you would have asked us this question mid-pregnancy or directly postpartum, I would have told you no, <laughs> that it's probably gonna be like a one child family. I think, so like forever ago, we kind of settled on like two or three and then the pregnancy and birth was really hard so we were both kind of like well if one's all that we get one is all that we get mm -hmm. and that's fine and i feel like now i'm noticing that i'm wanting to have another kid so i think our plan is probably two and maybe three <laughs> probably two though but i will say we've both talked about that as of right now, like if we weren't able to get pregnant, then we would be okay with one. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what I was gonna say is like where we're at currently, that we're not like planning ahead, like what's ideal or anything like that. We're no. really just kind of like going with the flow of where we're at and what we feel. And as Jesse mentioned, currently we've both been having our own experiences of like, oh, it might be nice to have another, oh, I'm kind of like ready, you know, ready starting to, start to about right, it, yeah. yeah, starting to get We're not ready. like in the not trying yet. time yeah. yet, but it's definitely something we've started to think about. Yeah. And then, yeah, you just like take it one step at a time, especially, you know, we're not super old, but at the same time, you know, we're in our thirties. So we're just not planning far ahead. We're just like being with what is, and then very happy with our family as it is. And so if one was, what it ended up being then we're yeah. just super grateful for that yeah so this one's for me is being a mom harder or easier than you expected both <laughs> i'll start with easier it is easier for me to love her than i expected and that's like as someone that like i just didn't grow up in a super like lovey show love type of family and sometimes i feel like that's hindered me like I don't necessarily know how to show love I've never been good with kids 
<laughs> at all <laughs> like I've never wanted kids they've always made me feel really uncomfortable so I was worried having a kid that I wouldn't love it the way that people say that you do um, everybody's like oh you just like love your child more than anything and I'm like well maybe not you know and that is true for me like I it's much easier for me to love her I'm very I'm much more patient with her than I am with most people I still need to work on my patience with her yeah the loving her was much easier than I thought harder also um, I think that harder in the sense of I wasn't expecting how long sleep deprivation could be and like how hard that could be I feel like we have a good system for that but it's still hard there's just hard things that happens like she got hurt the other day and that's really hard to like take care of your own nervous system <laughs> and like when she's hurt or going through parenting and like noticing how you wish you would have been parented like there's hard things that come with it in a in different ways I guess than just like is it hard to be a parent there's just so much more to it than I don't think I fully realize, but like in good and in difficult ways. Okay, this question says, I watched your vlog recently where you were missing Raleigh and not feeling very happy with the new town and house you're living in. I can link that video. Do you have any plans to move again to either a different city or just a different house in the same city when your lease is up? Kind of similar to family planning. Uh, there's not much planning going on. At this current point in time, we are just kind of like going with the flow. The biggest thing for us, like throughout the course of our relationship, uh, not only just the time that we've been married, but just like our whole relationship, it seems like there's just been a lot of change yeah. and like big relatively change. big change. Like it's <laughs> not small stuff. Yeah. At this point, it, I think it really just feels like creating stability and getting in like all senses of the word like financially sure just not have moving and something like that be the focus because that's just such a huge energetic like constantly looming thing yes yeah. that said you know future that is also kind of up in the air like we're not also not really set on staying here we're you know we obviously can't stay here forever because we're renting it <laughs> right yeah, and I think the kind of like short answer to that would be we're definitely not tied to this house or this neighborhood. It is very nice and it's like great for this time of life for us and for Ivy and the proximity to my family and stuff like that. It's not like a, oh, we're for sure staying here. We talk about things like if we stay in the Illinois area, I don't think that we would stay. We're kind of like in the Schaumburg area, which if you're familiar, it's like one of the biggest suburbs if not the biggest suburb in like chicago. the greater chicago area yeah. so it's just a little busier than we would prefer like where we're located our neighborhood is great yeah the house is too small for us long term so things like that so there's definitely like things that we would want differently if we were to leave this house and rent another one if we were to leave this house and purchase another one and then whether we stay in Illinois or not is just, that's just an unknown. We have no idea. But I don't, I don't currently see us moving out of Illinois when our lease is up next year. Want me to add an additional question? Sure. <laughs> Do you plan to continue renting mm. or will you buy sometime in the near future? <sighs> Commitment issues to buying. I mean, part of there, it- There's so many, like- Right now it's just like a terrible time to buy a house. I have heard that it's like, starting to get a little bit better but terrible time I think we need to decide if we want to stay in Illinois long term before we <laughs> decide about purchasing a home but on the other side of that there's also I think probably because we had a kid there's also this like innate sense from both of us where we just want to like settle yeah I feel like root down like, we would just... like some place that's like ours that we can like do things to that maybe has more of the things that we want in it. I think the urge to buy is there more than it's ever been in Correct. our entire relationship. Yeah. Like we've totally been fine with renting. Yeah. <laughs> so I think the urge to buy is there, but I think A, with where like the economy and housing market is at, it's just not for us right now. With where our finances are at, we're just not quite there yet. We're getting closer. 
I think we we need to decide like obviously with purchasing a home there's more set like yeah just more commitment like yeah you said. more commitment yeah just to highlight the financial aspect of it too and I'm saying this also for anybody that can relate <laughs> It's really difficult, especially like when you're trying to get yourself out of a financial hole or try to make your finances, financial situation better, but to then also be paying a lot in rent for a place, it's really hard to do that and save for a down payment. Right. So like paying off debt, pay, having a high rent payment and trying to save for a down payment, because here's the thing, y'all. We're in our mid thirties. By the time we buy, we're gonna be close to forty. We don't really want a starter home. We're not gonna go from renting to something like that. So that's kind of the. It's just a, rather... it's a very strange spot to be in. It's a very and I will also say like if anybody has yeah. recommendations or suggestions, like please throw that out here uh, in terms of like how strategically what we might do. Um, but I just want to mention that because like I said. That's the reality of it, and also, uh, like, along with the factors Jesse mentioned. But I also just wanted to, like, speak to anybody else that's ever been in a situation of you know, just a similar spot where it's, like, really, well, it's just a catch-22. That was part of the decision with moving here, though. Like, renting in Illinois, we're not going to find anything less than what we pay. Renting even in parts of Wisconsin... We looked like in the suburbs, like outskirts of Madison was the same price, if not more than it is out here in Illinois. So like moving here, we knew that that was gonna slow us down on like yeah. the debt. If we would have stayed in Raleigh, especially in our old place, we easily could have put a lot more money toward debt or toward a down payment, but yeah. we sacrificed that with moving here. I've, I've noticed like questions similar to this lately, but also, and the person said, you don't have to answer this if it's too personal. What are your thoughts on your husband not being able to leave the house and do things with you and Ivy? When you talk about doing activities with her, you seem sad that he's missing out on these fun new parts of her life. Do you worry that he'll never recover? And I know that I've like skirted around this subject because it's not my business to tell. Well, Benjamin is my husband. So I try to say my point of view as much as possible, although I know maybe i've said more than i should have in some senses for benjamin's what he would prefer so i'll answer part of the question and then if you want to tell them anything you can for me yes it's really hard not having him be able to be a part of some of the stuff that i'm doing um, not only is it hard for me because i have to push myself out of my comfort zone I also want to do things with him like I like doing things with Benjamin you guys saw when we lived in Raleigh we did stuff together all the time and now we have Ivy so obviously yeah I I definitely am sad that he's missing out on some of this stuff but I I do not worry that he'll never recover I know that he will but yeah it, it's been hard for sure not having someone all the time which is why it's hopeful that his family's here I'll just kind of like go from where you left off that it's been hard uh, in many senses. I very much value and prioritize being a good father, a good husband. I take a long-term approach on things and I've really tried to tackle this from a root cause perspective or like angle. Doing that has been very slow. <laughs> it's been very slow progress. There has been progress, but it's just slow. And I think any, anybody's healing journey, whatever you're dealing with, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, all of the above, a healing journey is always your own and it should always be your own. And you should never let anybody dictate the pace of that. And for me, a big part of the actual healing that I've been doing, that's very important. Me pacing this and, and tuning into what is right for me is crucial and really tied into the overall healing. And I do come back to, I want to be the father and the husband that I can be. For me, it's just meant having a season where this is just kind of the reality. And yeah, I mean, 
you do miss out on things and I'm not a part of everything and I know that and he's definitely makes, bummed when right I was gonna say I know it makes other people sad I know it makes me sad but it is but like there's gonna be, yeah it is what it is there's gonna be sacrifices on any end of it uh, no matter how it kind of turns out and so I've just tried to choose the path that feels the most true to to me and where I want to be in the future a hard a hard season but I yeah I just like appreciate the support and patience that um, I've been met with from Jesse and my family because it's I mean if we didn't have his family it would be much yeah, much harder things would be different <laughs> and I will also say that couples therapy and personal therapy has been really helpful yeah. for both of us getting through that because it hasn't always been easy yeah on either of our ends here we go okay here we go back <laughs> we had to change the battery okay do you have a timeline slash plan for how you intend to pay off debt when do you hope to be debt free I feel like this kind of goes with what are your 2024 goals? Just meaning in general, we're gonna take some time. I think Benjamin's taking the last week of the year off and we're hoping that we can have like some time alone, like if his parents can take Ivy or something like that to kind of go through that and make decisions on what we're gonna tackle between debt and our heat turned back on. Sorry if you can hear that. Like saving money, things like that. You want me to turn off? Yeah. We'll definitely, Ben's turning the heat off. We'll definitely do a video on some of our goals and, and that'll probably include what we're planning to do for debt. As far as timeline and everything, last year, as you guys know, we weren't really able to focus on debt. We focused more on saving. Yeah, so I don't feel like we have a timeline necessarily when do you hope to be debt free tomorrow really that's my goal <laughs> no that's my hope but i have no idea it's hard to like make those like i hate making like set goals and timelines because then if you don't hit them you feel like you you like made a mistake or like you know what you like or do you know what i mean like you like messed something up when really yeah. like life happened for example we moved home and then cora tore our acl like we would have had you know, $5,000 more in our savings by now if she hadn't done that, but we couldn't have planned for that. Yeah, I don't know if you have anything to add, but I feel like, so yeah, we don't have like a technically, like a technical timeline for any of that stuff, but we are hoping to yeah. to make some like goals and plans. It's hard to like make a really solid plan when you haven't been in a place to really do that. <laughs> and so, yeah. you know, over the past couple of years, we've gotten into a better spot with that, but then as Jesse said, like last year between prepping for baby and childbirth and doing all that, like at the turn of the year and then with moving this year, like, yeah, there was no, it was like save what we can, take care of those large expenses and go from there. We'll be using that reset going into 2024 and hopefully we can come up with at least a little bit more of a plan than we have. And I think we're both like pretty good with being realistic about stuff, but I do kind of to my point about the house stuff, we're going to have to be quite strategic at this point because while we have a decent income, we're still spread out a good amount by through expenses. So we just have to figure out how we're going to a lot, the bit that we have left over. Right. So whatever, if we come up with anything, we'll, we'll try to share a video probably earlier in 2024. We are going to be paying off, um, <laughs> One of, one, one of our debts uh, yeah. go, like by the end of the year though, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. Under a $1,000 left on that. Yeah. <laughs> My question is, did your doctor put you on a certain diet for your health problems? Just curious because I have some health issues with my thyroid and they don't with me. If you're going to a regular doctor, they're never going to put you on a diet. <laughs> they're never going to tell you that food will help you with thyroid issues. If you go to a holistic practitioner, the first thing they're going to tell you is that food will help you on your thyroid journey. So it really depends. And it depends like where you're at. In general, with thyroid issues, they tend to tell you not to eat gluten. I don't exactly know why. If I remember, um, I can put a link to like some articles down below, but it's something about the protein in gluten mimics something with your thyroid and your thyroid attacks. I don't know. Yeah, but anyway, that was pretty, yeah, that was yeah. pretty close. <laughs> it, they, it is something that almost every doctor that I've worked with has mentioned 
not eating gluten even if you're not gluten intolerant and then i think in general with thyroid stuff you tend to have insulin issues so you tend to want to eat maybe a little bit higher protein and fat and a little bit less carbs not low carb but something like that however every person is different and it really just depends I also was dealing with things like SIBO, I'm currently, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So then there's like certain diets to do for that. And just in general, I have a lot of gut issues that go along with that stuff. So it really depends. I would recommend if you have the ability to work with like a naturopathic doctor or a nutritionist who has background in autoimmune disease or Functional medicine. A functional medicine slash alternative medicine doctor. They tend to be like doctors of chiropractic or like, I don't even know. But sometimes you can find people that are covered by insurance, like my doctor is covered by insurance. Yeah. So just like look into that kind of stuff or follow accounts if you don't have the monetary means for it. Follow yeah. people on Instagram. If I remember, I can link a couple of people that I like down below who talk about thyroid issues and just take what feels good and what doesn't. Cause even, even the whole gluten thing, like some people are fine with gluten and some people aren't. But anyway, that's kind of my, my take on that. This is another one that's more like goals focused. So I'll save that one for when we're doing like our goals stuff. It's like parenting, relationship, health, financial goals. So we'll talk about those in a different video. She also says book goals for 2024. I don't have any book goals yet. So that's a, I'm gonna put that on my list of things to think about. My, mine would be make some time to read. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. And don't make yourself such, I think I made myself a goal of reading 75 books this year. Who do I think I am? An idiot, that's why. Yeah, not a mother. I, I, ate, I ate, I read so many books last year, but it was because I was so nauseous that I couldn't look at my phone, <laughs> so yeah. I had to read. Right. Next question, these are a lot of book questions. What app do you use to track books? I use Goodreads. I know some people like Goodreads and some people don't. I like it because I can kind of keep everything in here. Um, so I can keep like books I want to read. So if I hear somebody on TikTok or somewhere talk about a book that sounds interesting, I'll add it to my want to read list so that eventually when I'm like looking for something to read, it's on my little list. What are you reading these days? <laughs> are you reading anything? I am, I, I was also just gonna say, I've never used anything to track what I read, but then again, I don't- He reads like one book. Yeah, and I read, I like nonfiction for the most part, so I'm never, doing like a bunch of uh, like fiction books. I am reading The Myth of Normal. I also don't know how to say the author's name properly, Dr. Gabor Mate. One of the people that is very well known for understanding trauma and how other things connect to that. And so he basically is talking about how our lifestyle and our societal norms and stuff like that are setting us up for failure when it comes to health and again, from a holistic standpoint, uh, it affects everything and our nervous systems are at the root of that and we don't have a culture that allows, uh, or it allows for it, but it doesn't really focus on contributing to the well-being of those things that are at the root. I'm not gonna give that much of a synopsis for mine. I'm reading fantasy books mostly. I actually just finished Iron Flame, which is the second book from Fourth Wing, which was really good. For, Fourth Wing was definitely better, but it's still good. I'm mad about the ending though, so I have uh, probably a full year to be pissed about it until the next video mm -hmm. or next book comes out. There's another book that I'm trying to finish that honestly, I love this series, but I didn't like this book, so it's taking me forever to get through. And then I really, I haven't started another series yet just because it currently just feels like a lot of work <laughs> to like, because I read fantasy books and they tend to be like multiples, like series. So I think that that's been a piece of it. So I am almost always reading fantasy. He's almost always reading nonfiction. Wanna come be in the video? Yeah. There she is. Oh, you got your bunny. You got your bunny. Uh -huh. Yeah. Hey, hi. 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 Is that cool? Uh -huh. Is the camera? She's very concerned. 
try to answer these last three with Ivy. We'll see how it goes. Traditions you want to keep, start, not do with Ivy. One of the traditions that I had growing up with for Christmas was like getting a real tree. I would love to do that again mm. someday, but that just like wasn't in the cards this year. And I love our fake tree, so now I don't even know. Traditions I want to start. They're also kind of traditions I did growing up. Like Christmas was actually a really like good season for my family. Like we were all happy and together. Um, I would really like to start like baking with Ivy, baking cookies. I bought some stuff to make spritz cookies. Uh, going and looking at lights. We've done that a couple times. Mm. We really like that. We bought some Christmas pajamas to wear. So we're going to do that. Wait. Yeah, I don't really know any other specific traditions. I want to make sure that we celebrate her birthday and make sure that it's separate from Christmas. I really want to try not to be one of those parents that like combines birthdays, which is hard when you have a baby near a big holiday like Christmas. So yeah, the bun. that's something that's important. We're going to try to do a little birthday party for her this year. But yeah, I don't know. Do you have anything that you want to start or not do? that you can think of. Nothing, if you have any ideas, let us know. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing super specific. Um, kind of like Jesse mentioned, like along the same lines, make the holiday season magical, which Jesse's words, uh, yeah. fully on board with that. Uh, I think the biggest thing is just like spending time with family, especially, you know, being in the Midwest where it's cold, yeah, uh, it's a the whole reason we moved home was to spend time with family. Yeah, and, and also like m taking advantage of that here with our family. So like just doing cozy stuff inside, you know, baking, playing games, reading, watching you know, movies. watching more movies than we would throughout the year. Uh, yeah, just like family first type of stuff. But but yeah, if you have specific suggestions, um, I'm definitely not the best in terms of tradition i have it's like it's more just like the the general sense of you know i know what i want it to feel like yeah favorite part of the holidays christmas lights i'm a christmas lights girly so having christmas lights on our house this is the first year benjamin did that and i love it we have our beautiful tree like i just love christmas lights that's huge for me shout out to grandpa for helping out huh? yeah grandpa <laughs> as much as i miss raleigh because i really do Thanksgiving was so nice to like just have a very small amount of family here but we were able to like hang out with people they were able to hang out with Ivy that's just like that's the whole reason we moved home the last three years of holidays has been really hard for us because we weren't able to come home for them and nobody was able to come by us so I feel like really digging in to that and like appreciating the holidays this year and next year and however long we're around family I think for me will be a favorite part because now I know what it feels like not to have that I also really hope there's snow on Christmas but right, it Jesse's doesn't seem like it yeah it doesn't seem like there's going to be so I'm a little irritated about that yeah family food. and then well yeah. you used to like food I feel like now I well, do you I still just do. like we yeah just it's have like to, different different stuff yeah we just have to like dairy free desserts <laughs> <laughs> yeah. which we did some good stuff yeah uh, Thanksgiving. and then i would say also just like time off and time to relax and that goes hand in hand with family especially with this year you know same ideas as mentioned before end of you know pregnancy and then childbirth and then moving yeah and then you know the everything that i've gone through it's been a a busy year <laughs> start to finish so i'm just i'm really looking forward to having some time off just to hang with these guys and yeah just relax yeah hi and then the last question is favorite local business <laughs> this is actually a good question because it's difficult i'll be honest there is a lot of the stuff around here is chains our chains because we're in again the Schaumburg area so we're near ish Woodfield like the really big mall out here so everything's like you know Starbucks and like I was I complained to Benjamin all the time that there's like no 
little coffee shops out here and i just like hate that i yeah. i miss the feel of like a local coffee shop if you have any recommendations in like anywhere in the western suburbs because i will drive let me know i think it's a good question in terms of like getting us to think about that more <laughs> yeah because currently i would say we don't have one yeah. i mean i definitely no don't we get bb bop a lot yeah. which is a chain but i think it's like there definitely wasn't one out by us beacon donuts <laughs> that's right yeah My yeah definitely like to support local businesses and things like that but haven't explored a bunch even though i know the area well yeah ivy's upset about it and uh yeah we really wish there was less chains but that's just whoa currently where we're at oh you go so, down anyway we obviously need to feed ivy and this is going to be like a 35 minute <laughs> video so thanks so much Someone for say bye. watching say bye say bye bye see you Campbell. thanks for the question she's looking at the door she's like who am i saying bye to <laughs> we'll see you guys bye. in the next video